how many spouses may not express their thoughts, instead harboring unanswered questions about their spouse, hiding secrets they have not shared out of fear about what their spouse would say, struggles they wish to overcome but do not dare to share out of fear of conflict with their spouse. They don't talk about these things because they are scared of hurting their spouse. Maybe they are harboring problems with their children or even with their spouse, but they are, do not feel able to solve them. They prefer to avoid talking about it. Will time help to solve these struggles and problems? Thank you very much for your efforts and help at home. I appreciate you very much. You are a great help in my life and for our children. I love you. How nice it is to feel and to hear these words. What should we plan for the next weekend? What tax do we have pending, my love? It would be nice if we can do something together with the children and spend some time together. Don't you think? What can we do? How nice it is when your spouse listens to you and gives you space to express your ideas and thoughts. Why didn't you tell me about your plans? You spend a lot of time away and the kids need you. Why don't you join us for lunch on time so that we may be together at the table? I don't think any husband or wife feels good when words of reproach come. But these are times to reflect and seek change. How do we advise our daughter Melite for her future? Can we pay for her studies for her next career? Or should we advise her to work a little and save some money? What do you think? What do you know about Joella and also about her dialogue with her friends in her teenage years? We should help her to make good friends. I'm glad that we can talk about these things. These are concerns I have too and we need to help our children. I recall a story about a little girl who loved to observe a meadow full of flowers with its abundant and rich perfumes and its stunning panorama of nature. One day this little girl received the news that this land had been sold and that an urban setting would be built on it. Very soon the trucks and the bulldozers arrived and all the beautiful joys of nature disappeared. When the father saw the disappointed look in his daughter's eyes, he proposed an idea. I have an idea. Why don't we look for a piece of land? It doesn't matter if it's smaller. We will fill it with flowers and continue to enjoy the beauty of God's creation. The little girl was thrilled. And together they began to look for an appropriate lot. As soon as they received permission to plant, they went straight to work and soon everything was ready. The grass had been planted, the flowers began to bloom beautifully. It was then that they decided to host a garden opening party to celebrate the garden's opening and invited their neighbors to the special event that would be held in the flower garden. But something unexpected happened. Suddenly, a terrible wind rain came and flooded the garden and ruined all the beautiful garden arrangements they had made. Then the worried little girl asked her father, Dad, what are we going to do about the garden opening now that everything is such a terrible condition? The father answered, Don't worry, my child. We will find a solution. So what did they do? We will repair the damage, he said. We'll simply host the garden opening party a little later date. And so they quickly began to work on that beautiful garden they had been working on. They replaced the damaged plants and even added a finishing touches that the garden did not have before. The garden had been more beautiful now than ever with all the stunning natural beauty that was to be seen. They even added a water fountain in the garden. Everyone who visited the garden opening party marveled at the natural beauty and the scenes brought them all joy. Our homes and our marriages are actually very similar to this story. We spend beautiful and lovely days, months, years together. 
But stormy times also come. Sometimes and disappointments and unexpected problems that seem to affect the happiness and beauty of the home may also come. This father faced the situation with a very positive outlook, with great faith. He always gave his daughter hope. And we should do the same thing within our homes. Thank you so much for your help. You sa always sacrifice so much for our family. Thank you very much also to you, my love. You're a great help also in my life. I love you too. When was the last time, dear friend who is listening, that instead of choosing words of criticism and scolding, you shared a warm smile and a word of affection or dedicated some one-on-one -on -one time to your child or spouse? Let us be more aware of the needs and desires of our children or spouses. When they express a need or a desire, it likely means that they have thought about it and evaluated it in their heart for quite some time. When they express these things, we must take it seriously and not ignore it. Of course, we cannot please every desire or request. But let us do our best to share love through our expressions, words and actions with the members of our family. Let us consider how we may contribute to their happiness and their spiritual, emotional, mental and physical growth. Bobby, can you play a little bit with me? Usually, our answer is, I'm too busy and don't have time, or maybe later. But the truth is that later sometimes never comes. And that you don't have time or that I'm too busy is actually the truth. But I'm the one who decides how I use my time. And the children are important and they need you. Talita, let's enjoy a few moments of fun together. Come. Are you happy, Talita, that we played a few moments together? Yes, I'm very happy. Thank you, Poppy. I love you. The Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 2 that we are an open letter. The letter is open so that others may find hope and read about Christ and the message of good news of the gospel in us, written not with ink but with the spirit of the living God. Not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. Who also hath made us an able minister in the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. God is the only one who can make us competent fathers and mothers and help us to live out the gospel in our homes. We need the help of the living God. We are not to be subject to Satan's plans, nor are we to be subject to our own inclinations and sins. Jesus has the power to help us maintain an attitude that beautifies our lives, our homes, and glorifies God. Now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved, the Savior of life unto life. 2 Corinthians 2 verses 14 to 16. It is true that sometimes, especially for a mother, the sacrifice that is required to establish the well-being of the home looks too difficult and we feel like we are going to faint when we see the long list of things required to maintain harmony in the home. But God tells us, faint not. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. 2 Corinthians 4, one. The covenant you made with God in marriage and the children that God has given you, 
who you brought into the world are a work of perseverance and responsibility that we must carry forward. We must not grow weary in providing our best efforts and the best perfume to bring happiness to our home. Challenges, problems, irritations, whether big or small, insignificant or enormous, will always arise, but we must face them face to face and head on. That's right, face to face. This means that we must seek a solution by maintaining a high goal that glorifies God, rather than allowing ourselves to be carried away by discouragement or giving in to sin. If the thief is circling around your house, what do you do as head of the house, as father and husband? Should he be hiding or confront him face to face? We must also face challenges face to face with all wisdom and prudence. Christ is on your side. So confront the home burglars face to face and don't let them into your home or let them destroy your home. An inspired thought says, let those composing the family circle pray that God will sanctify their tongues, their ears, their eyes, and every member of their body. When brought into contact with evil, it is not necessary to overcome with evil. Christ has made it possible for the character to be fragrant with good. How many dishonor Christ and misrepresent his character in the home circle? How many do not manifest patience, forbearance, forgiveness, and true love? Many have their likes and dislikes and feel at liberty to manifest their own per perverence, dispositions rather than to reveal the will and the work that the character of Christ. The life of Jesus is full of kindness and love. Are we growing into his divine nature? Let fathers and mothers make a solemn promise to God whom they profess to love and obey and that by His grace they will not disagree between themselves but will in their own life and temper manifest the spirit that they wish their children to cherish. This is an important truth. Our tongues, ears, and eyes can be of great blessing to our partner and to our children. But they are also often the cause of our deceit and can harm others, leading to sin when we allow the devil an entering wedge into our mind. The Word of God recommends, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifesting the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. We find this in 2 Corinthians 4 verses 1 and 2. King David was carried away by his impulses and committed a series of serious mistakes when he looked at a woman from his window. Finally, he had to face the situation face to face. He waited until he was discovered. But in any case, the prison of his thoughts would have already warned him that he would have to face the situation at some point. Then Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, for thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. We see this in 2 Samuel 12 verses 7 and 12. God knew David's mistake very well. And David would have to face his sin face to face. A woman shared profound words after going through a disappointment with her husband. She said, lies can break friendships, marriages, and families. He said he lied because he was afraid of losing me, but it was because he lied to me that he lost me. It seems easier to sweep things under the rug to hide our true selves so we don't have to accept, confront, or face hard truths. 
I once heard that it is easier to be honest 100% of at the time than to keep them 98% of the time. And that rings true to me. But I know true honesty is always easy. It takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable, transparent, authentic and to discover your true self. A woman who heard an unfortunate truth about her husband later confessed, The truth was devastating. I felt disrespected. I felt loveless, unsupported and without care. I felt like a fool. But the truth brought clarity to the chaos and confusion it had been causing me for so long. It was a relief. I felt compassion for him, and that was terrifying. I didn't want to trust him because that would be too risky. Even though I had trusted my intuition, his lies had robbed me of the freedom to make well-informed decisions and there was a sense of indignation that wouldn't leave me alone because it seemed like I had a false concept of who I was. I value truth, even when and especially when it is painful. Babo tells us to renounce the hidden and shameful. If we do not learn to renounce the hidden and shameful because we are caressing it, God will have to reveal it in front of everyone, as we have seen it in this story of David. There's a sins in homes that have been hidden, and there are shameful matters that would not exist in homes. God calls on all families, couples, and young people. We know how deeply David suffered because of his sin and how the people of Israel as a whole suffered because of David's mistake. Sin will always catch up to us. That is why it is so important to renounce all hidden and shameful things today, facing the enemy face to face and renouncing the alliance we have often we have offered him. How many mistakes and miseries have arisen from hidden sins? whether from vices, immoralities, lies, or even a verbal abuse that was cherished and is now hard to let go of. God is by your side, friend, and invites you to make the decision to give up what destroys your home, your relationship, and your family. This requires a dialogue with God, but perhaps also a dialogue between spouses and between children and their parents. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, says James 5.16. This world has been transformed to a hospital for the sick, not due to COVID-19, but because it is filled with people who don't truly know God and His truths. The only way we would achieve true freedom is by uplifting the truth. Homes are destroyed. The minds of young people are destroyed by sin through things observed on TV or social media in their tender age. Many are seeking a remedy from various sources, but only Christ can give the remedy the sinner needs and grant him reconciliation. It does not matter how small or big your sin is or how much your home has already been affected by it. Today is the day that God tells you, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11 verse 28 Yes, we have to face things face to face. How sweet! Pictures of newlyweds looking at each other face to face. They express attraction and deep love. There is nothing between them that separates them. This picture expresses friendship. When you look into your partner's eyes, you strengthen trust and show crystal clear transparency in your life. By making intentional effort to share what's on your heart through conversations, the stones of obstacles dissolve. The more we cultivate face-to-face, -face, 
communication, the more the misunderstandings will fade. And the more we will feel free to serve one another. Both will look for new ideas of how to make the path of married life more enjoyable. If we constantly contemplate God face to face, we will one day also rejoice as we receive His blessing instead of hearing words of condemnation. Let us seek to grow under God's blessing with our spouse and in harmony with God. Looking at someone's face to face, expressing honesty, sincerity, and pure conscience is, if it is not communicated honestly, we give rise to temptation, as other sources of communication are often sought, sources that the devil disguises with a different face. In an article on the power of face-to-face -face communication in the workplace, the following was written. While the proliferation of digital channels and the rise of remote work Face-to-face -face communication has become more important than ever. Companies increasingly recognize this, and companies like Google, Apple, and IBM have begun to bring workers back to the office. Countless research studies have demonstrated the value of face-to-face -face communication. They build relationships, inspire emotions, and build trust. Psychologist Susan Pinker, author of The Village Effect, even argues that face-to-face -face contact makes us healthier, happier, and smarter. This week, I found a card on my bed that said the following. Here I have it to show you. It's in English. Here is the note. And it says, I love you, my husband. Thank you for everything you are. And some beautiful hearts. There are many forms and ways to thank someone. A card, an email, or even a sticky note or someone's desk. But it's even better to say it in person. When emotions are intense, speaking personally is important to show compassion and avoid misunderstandings. Tone, body language, and words can be misinterpreted when not seen in person. One of the signs of an effective and empathetic leader is having the courage to be visible when sharing difficult news. The world of technology and business learned what God had practiced from the beginning with his children and his people. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. Exodus 33, 11. And there arose not a prophet in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. We read this in Deuteronomy 34, verse 10. The Lord talked with you face to face in the moment of the midst of the fire, Deuteronomy 5.4. To achieve success and harmony in friendship, we must maintain honest transparency and face-to-face -face communication. Adam and Eve practiced face-to-face -face communications with God. Learn from God, who desires to be your friend and who desires to communicate with you. Accept God's advice and learn from His example by communicating in this way with your spouse, with your children, and with your parents. To communicate personally with love, with patience, with hope, and with joy. Thus remember to share smiles and actions of love with our family members. Let us not stop doing this because of pride or some other sin. Let us not stop expressing affection, support, and persevering in the Lord's ways. The words, I appreciate you and I love you, can change a heart more than any other correction. May God always use to have the privilege of seeing our Savior face to face very soon. Amen. Amen.
May God bless you.